Hey there, my name is Nate Bagley. Glad that you're joining me today. We are picking up on part three of four in this four-part series all about the four horsemen of the apocalypse of marriage. So for those of you who may not have seen the previous two episodes, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are four behaviors that when they show up in a relationship, they basically predict its demise. If these behaviors go unchecked, they will ruin a relationship. And this is backed up by Dr. John Gottman's decades of research on what makes marriages work. And the first horseman of the apocalypse was criticism. The second one is defensiveness. And today we are talking about the third one, which is, in my opinion, the scariest of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And it is called contempt. And you'll find out why it's so scary in just a moment. Okay, so the reason I'm nervous about today's episode talking specifically about contempt is that contempt is the horseman that I am most susceptible to. And so I'm talking about my weakness here, and it's hard for me to admit that because contempt is also the most dangerous of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And when you understand kind of more about it, I'll I'll try and explain why it's a struggle for me. But let's dive in. So first, let's talk about why contempt is dangerous. So Dr. John Gottman, who did this research, says that contempt is the most dangerous out of all the four horsemen and that it is the sulfuric acid of relationships. If gone unchecked, this horseman will do more damage to your relationship and end it more quickly than any of the other four horsemen of the apocalypse. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Blink, and in that book, he quotes Dr. John Gottman and says, if Gottman observes, this kind of gives you an idea of how severe contempt can be, if Gottman observes one or both partners in a marriage showing contempt toward the other, he considers it the most important sign that a marriage is in trouble. So contempt is a key indicator that your marriage is in big doo-doo, and if you don't change your behavior, if you don't get kind of a hold on contempt, if you don't find a way to deal with it in a productive way, your relationship is headed for a bad place. So what is contempt? Contempt is essentially, it's a conveil of disgust and moral superiority. I like to think of it as a combination of disgust and anger. When you're just kind of, you loathe something so much that it just there's no better word than disgust. And the way that you communicate your disgust is through anger and hostility. The communication of contempt isn't always over the top like you would think. There are a lot of really subtle ways to be contemptuous. And we'll talk about those in just a second here. So here's some examples of contemptuous behavior. This is by no means a comprehensive list, but it's a good place to start. Name calling, swearing, belittling, demeaning your partner, mocking them, eye rolling, harsh or biting sarcasm. Some other ideas that are not on here are like correcting your partner's grammar, especially when they're upset. That could be a form of contempt. Physical intimidation could be very contemptuous. Anything that puts yourself above your partner or puts your partner down below and makes them kind of subhuman, that dehumanizes them. That is contemptuous behavior and it's really dangerous. And for me, The more obvious forms of contempt, like the name calling and the swearing and the belittling and physical intimidation, those things are not a problem for me. But what I struggle with are the subtle ways that I like, I will scoff or roll my eyes when I'm irritated or upset towards my partner. And it can come across as very painful and very hurtful. And it's something that I'm working on. And I'll show you how later on in this episode. Another really interesting thing is I was studying for this, for this show, I learned that I've known for a while that contempt actually has an impact beyond your relationship. So research actually shows that couples who are contemptuous towards each other are more likely to suffer from infectious illnesses like colds and the flu than couples who are not contemptuous. It also impacts your mental and emotional health. You're more likely to be depressed, have high anxiety and other mental health issues if you are taking part in a contemptuous relationship. And so ultimately, this is a really important point to hit home. You're not just killing your relationship when you're being contemptuous. You're literally killing each other. You are impacting the longevity of life, the overall physical and and mental and emotional health of your partner and yourself. And so this is like a really important thing to understand. It's really important to identify contempt when it shows up and to know how to deal with it. So hopefully we're going to give you some tools here going forward. The solution for contempt 
is to cultivate a culture of gratitude and appreciation. Now, it might seem a little bit silly to have this be the solution, but we'll get into why this is the solution in just a second. Before I do that, I want to just talk a little bit about, I think, why contempt is so prevalent. And I think in many ways, contempt is so common because it's the most common way of interacting with with a, a significant other that we see inside of Hollywood, in TV shows and movies. We see contempt portrayed all the time. People get into yelling matches, they scream at each other, they threaten each other. Physically, they also threaten with what my friend Doug Braun Harvey calls the severing response. You know, they threaten to end the relationship, to walk out on each other. They have no tact, no manners. They're cruel. They take advantage of each other's weaknesses. They hit each other where they know it's going to hurt. And these are kind of the examples that we have for what relationships look like. You know, just last night I watched the movie Crazy Stupid Love with my wife. And that movie is full of immature, contemptuous behavior. People getting back at each other, people taking advantage of each other, people hurting each other, sometimes intentionally, in many cases because they're disgusted with their partner and angry. And it's really common, I think, in our relationships because it's what we see so often on TV shows and in the movies and we don't really have many other models. And so I want to show you how gratitude and appreciation can be the perfect antidote to contempt. Gratitude is amazing because it helps prevent you from feeling unappreciated and undervalued. Now, if you're in a relationship and you feel like you're taken for granted, if you feel unappreciated, if you feel unvalued, if you feel like all of your efforts to make your partner's life better or all the things that you do for them go unrecognized and unappreciated, man, you can become real resentful real fast. And that resentment can lead to disgust and anger and frustration. And then you can start to justify really cruel behaviors towards your partner. And so when you cultivate kind of a a culture of gratitude and appreciation in your marriage, you're less likely to become resentful and frustrated and act out in a really negative way. But it goes beyond that. It also helps you see, gratitude helps you see the good in your partner rather than the flaws. I call this the rose-colored glasses. The research shows that people who tend towards looking for the good, who tend towards appreciation and gratitude, actually have a more accurate view of the world. They've done studies, actually, Dr. Gottman's Love Lab has done studies where they ask a couple to argue while they were being filmed, and then they would be observed by cameras and through a two-way mirror, and people on the other side of the mirror who were watching the cameras would code their body language and facial expressions. And they would code them for positive interactions, attempts to repair and connect, attempts to express appreciation and negative interactions, which were like the ways that we are mean and cruel and and withdraw from each other. And then they had couples come in and rewatch the fight and code their own body language and their own facial expressions and stuff. And people who tended towards being more cynical and critical and were less grateful tended to miss over 50% of the positive interactions or attempts to connect from their partner. And they often misconstrued neutral exchanges as negative. And so what they found is that on average, when people express more gratitude and look for the good and put on the rose-colored glasses, they actually have a more accurate view of the world than people who are more cynical and have what I would call poop-colored glasses. So this gratitude doesn't just affect the way that you show up in the relationship and how you feel about the relationship as a whole, but it also impacts how you perceive your partner. And you'll start to see the things that you're looking for when you express regular gratitude and appreciation. When you're looking for the good, you'll start to notice the good and that will reinforce the good that your partner brings into your life and make you less likely to be disgusted, angry, cynical, upset, frustrated, and to attack your partner in this really toxic and not cool way. So my big question for you guys, for you right now, is what is your daily gratitude practice? Do you journal? One of the things my partner and I do very often is we ask each other, hey, what's one thing that you love about me today? Do you have like a gratitude practice where you connect with friends and tell them what you're grateful for? There's so many different ways to practice gratitude and appreciation. Sending a a gratitude text I could probably think of a dozen ways off the top of my head that you could express regular gratitude and appreciation. But the important thing isn't how you do it. It's just that you do it and that you do it regularly. And as you start to focus on the good, as you start to look for 
the beauty in life and the beauty in your relationship, you're going to be pulled away from those contemptuous behaviors. And for me, it's those subtle things. Like I said, again, it's, it's being a little bit less quick to anger. It's being a little bit more patient and understanding, a little bit more empathetic. It's giving my partner the benefit of the doubt. And that is way more likely to happen when I'm expressing gratitude than when I'm stewing and mulling over all of the negative things that I perceive that are happening in life. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a sneak peek into how dangerous contempt can be. And if it goes unchecked in your relationship, how it can literally eat it from the inside out, like the sulfuric acid of love or the sulfuric acid of your relationships. If you want to make sure that you don't miss out on next week's episode, make sure that you subscribe and uh, you can actually watch the next one right here.